Hey there, Web102. Now, this week, you can claim again that I lied to you in Web101. You can claim, and I think maybe mistakenly, that I said something to the effect of HTML and CSS are all you need to create a website. CSS and HTML are all you're going to need uh, to create a whole host of different user interactions you know, whether or not those are on, you know, like refrigerators and connected devices, um, if those are in car stereo interactions, because CSS and HTML are so small and so compact that it makes it, you know, perfect, really, for these small, lightweight systems. And that is partially true, honestly. HTML and CSS are all you need. Um, but no sane person would use exclusively HTML and CSS to do all of the kind of work it is that they need to bring content to users. If we kind of step back from thinking that the only way we can deliver web content is on the web. We have seen already with Dreamweaver, we have seen already um, you know, through other interactions that we have had, not necessarily here with Web 102, but other interactions that you have had in, you know, the, frankly, unbounded, the great wide world that includes the internet now, right? So you have received email, newsletters, you have received um, dozens of different kinds of communications, right? So whether or not that was through Facebook or whether or not this is through Instagram or whatever else, and all of that is in some way, shape, or form beholden to HTML. Um, and the problem with just using HTML is kind of like telling you, you know, I'm going to teach you how to build something so you can make your own house. And then what we would do is we would drive you to the woods and say, here are trees, find some wood. And then we would drive you to a cave and we would be like, here is nickel and cadmium and other stuff. Figure out how to make nails. Then we would go back again and, you know, you would build a house from scratch by growing the materials. That's crazy, right? Or like when I had to do repairs on my garage it was it made more sense for me to go out and buy a new kind of nail gun rather than I have a hammer I have nails we could do the repairs with just this that's absolutely well it's insane but it's true right this is 2020 that shit's nuts you want to use you know a pneumatic nailer so that you can go bump 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 and just rapidly make repairs as opposed to spend the rest of the afternoon in the ER as I have to get my fingers put back together again if I use a hammer and nails. Bootstrap is essentially your pneumatic nailer. What it provides you with is a framework. It provides you with a, a ready-made, simple-to-use um, well, I'm going to repeat the word framework here because I cannot come up with a better term for it. Um, and what you do is you learn the ins and outs of the framework. And what it allows you to do, I think best, what it allows you to do best is single use, single page websites that you can use as either parts of HTML documents in emails. You can use them as part of setting up new client landing pages. You can use them as parts of a larger scheme for things like um, this is Eagle I am staring at. You could use it for parts of that. You could use it for parts of online services, things of that nature. So the bootstrap framework, which we're going to talk a little bit about here in a second, uh, is a shortcut for you. It is not abandoning HTML and CSS like we're going to see in the next video. It is providing you a structure for rapid deployment in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so that you don't have, it's, I'm going to call it the responsibility, but it's not the responsibility. It's so that you're not damned to forever 
recreate everything from scratch, which is a huge and inappropriate use of your time. Whereas the framework here, just like when we saw a platform with Dreamweaver, the framework here makes it so that as long as you follow the rules, which cuts down on your creativity, I will admit just a little bit, but as long as you follow the rules, the rapidity with which you can get a web page out is remarkable once you get the hang of it. So in the next video here, we're going to take a closer look at the ins and outs of what Bootstrap provides to you.